Hello everybody, welcome back, live from my mother's basement, again, here's Johnny, and uh, you know, before I begin, I just want to go on record as to say that a couple of folks have chosen to take it upon themselves to write me some messages that are a little bit absurd, and I just, I wonder if they're trying to get some kind of reaction out of me that's going to make me like really mad and go on a rant and call them out and make them famous or something but um guys this is an opinionated video and what that means is that I share what's important to me and what I feel about the wrestling industry and there isn't a single person holding a gun to your head saying you have to agree with this or even believe it yourself or agree with it or anything you know you you have the right to dispute me on that but at the same time if you don't like what I'm saying turn the fucking video off it's really not that hard there's plenty of people that I start watching their videos and they say one or two things I don't agree with but I don't I don't send them hate mail that's kinda dumb Anyway, so I feel that that's very childish, and, you know, if you enjoy doing that, so be it, but I'm not going to make you famous. You're going to have to piss somebody else off, because I'm not even going to get into the argument with you. Uh, today's episode of my awesome, awesome, awesome low-budget video, <laughs> which today is brought to you by Schweppes Ginger Ale, that's my sponsor for the day, um... We're going to talk a little bit about Vengeance, and why Vengeance is going to be an important pay-per-view. Now, I might not get too heavily into the match predictions, but I wanted to have a conversation kind of with myself and with many of you out there that do like to click and, you know, put the comments down below to just, you know, share our thoughts about what's going to happen at Vengeance why Vengeance is an important pay-per-view for WWE right now. And I think one of those reasons that Vengeance is important is because TNA's last pay-per-view was really bad. And if Vengeance can capitalize on the frustration of fans, I think that WWE will secure our attention span for the next couple of weeks. You know, people are sort of bailing out on TNA right now because of their pay-per-view and how bad it was. And because of the follow-up show, you know, Impact this week was a little bit ridiculous. And, you know, it's cool that James Storm is, is TNA's new champion, but to, to do it like that, it's, it's like a disrespect I don't care how many people are excited and you, you're going to celebrate and throw beer around the ring, but it just, it deserved a lot more prestige to hand over the title than just to get kicked once in the head. I mean, you know, it reminded me of the, of the squash match between Ultimate Warrior and Triple H. It was like, you get, you know, Kurt Angle got a couple of punches in, knocked storm to the ground and then lo and behold one move is, is all it takes to to win the match afterward it, it was that quality of awful so anyway let's 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 talk about vengeance here for a minute and uh a couple of things that vengeance has going for it is that they've actually worked on feuds here and carried them over from hell in a cell or just established something that's going to grab our attention. And what I mean by this is something like, say, Seamus versus Christian. Have we seen it before? Yeah. Um, but I think that it's an important match because there's a lot at stake here. You're, uh, you're trying to present Seamus as somebody that can really hold that flag, you know, be the flag bearer for them steer the ship, you know, become the captain if need be, and, you know, Christian is definitely a guy that, you know, has been in the main event scene and can really put him and propel him up there 
with, you know, a lot of momentum behind him. So that's that's one thing that this pay-per-view is going for it is that, you know, at Hell in a Cell, we saw Sheamus and Christian, and they're still, they're carrying on with that. They're trying to build upon it. And I, I think that that's a good move, you know, because you, you don't want to force Sheamus immediately into the spotlight, you know. Um, I think having him go with Christian here and then doing something new with him at Survivor Series and then uh, ultimately culminating whatever next feud he's in at TLC. Um, and then even going on to have him win the Royal Rumble. And I'm, I'm going to say it right now, that I picked Sheamus to win the Royal Rumble 2012. So, there you have it, everybody. That's my that's my Royal Rumble pick. You know, it might be a little bit early, but... Um, I picked ADR last year to win the Royal Rumble. I know I didn't have, uh, I didn't have videos up at that time, so there's really no proof, but you, you can go back, and if I can ever get my friend Dan on here to vouch for me, we were talking, like, about a month before the Royal Rumble, and I said, I wouldn't be surprised if, given the way that, you know, they've been working with Alberto Del Rio, if they just put him over, so... You know, I got a really good feeling about Sheamus. I think that a lot of other people out there would agree with me. And uh, let's just see where that goes. Um, as for this whole Cena versus Del Rio thing right now, I think something that we have to keep in mind is that uh, they're trying to build Del Rio as a credible champion, whether or not we believe it. I mean, they think that they're doing the right thing by putting him in this last sta man standing match. And... I think that um, I think that this is going to be one of Del Rio's better matches of this year, to be honest. I mean, I really hope so, at least. Uh, why do I feel this way? Is because it's a great way to showcase not only Alberto's strength as a competitor, but just his intelligence in order to to come up with a situation to you know be able to get John Cena to not be able to get up. You know, like what kind of shenanigans are they going to pull? Is he going to ally himself with Miz and Truth, possibly, and be one of the people at the Survivor Series on the on the evil tag team side? You know, like, ooh, it could be, could be a big master plan. Um, I know that ultimately WWE wants to build toward a CM Punk Del Rio feud. I think that that's what a lot of the fans are looking to see right now, and I think that that makes a lot of logical sense because. You got John Cena, who's going to go on to have a program with The Rock at Survivor Series. He really doesn't need to be having the belt and thrown into that. So, if WWE can deliver ADR winning somewhat believably over John Cena without too many, you know, without like putting a forklift and a, and a pallet over himself so he can't get up, which is something that I guess that's how mankind either got pinned or pinned somebody back in the day. I, I remember that briefly, but I don't remember the whole details about it. If you remember what match I'm trying to rec recall here, just leave the leave it in the comments below. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think that it's a, it's a bad call at this point to have that match. I just think that the the way that it ended at Hell in a Cell, that this was r realistically the only way that they could go. Um, they had to have, like, a defining match in order to get Cena out of that picture for a little bit. And maybe Cena will feel like he got screwed and have to reclaim the title down the road after this whole rock business, or at some point during the rock business, but I don't think that it's going to be now. Because he just had it, and he passed it back off to Del Rio, so it's just... It's a mess. Let's just hope that they clear it up and that ADR stays your champion for a while and gets a good run. That's what I would like to see. If you don't agree, tell me why. Um, a match that I'm really looking forward to is Mark Henry versus The Big Show. And here's one of the reasons why. is because Big Show is a multiple-time world's champion. Um, he's a credible world's champion. Not only because he's held it so much, but because he's so damn big. And I think that if Mark Henry can knock him off, Mark Henry can prove that he's a mainstay in that title division until he wants to give that belt up. He's not just a placeholder guy, you know, like, he's actually carrying that title and giving it some kind of credibility and some kind of meaning. So I really want to see Mark Henry win, but 
I want to see this feud go on longer, too. I don't want it to just end right now. Like, if tomorrow night somehow Big Show, you know, gets screwed, then I think that, that would be the best way to go. I think that I think that those two need to ultimately be in a program that lasts a while. Um, until probably Survivor Series or even until TLC. I, would, I, could, I could see that going that long. They're two really big guys, and I don't think that there's really anybody else ready to step into that picture with Mark Henry right now because they've got Orton doing other stuff and because they just really don't have anybody else in the title scene right now. Unless Undertaker comes back somehow, which is really awkward. But I, I don't see Undertaker coming back and then holding the title to WrestleMania. I mean, how, why would he even defend it? We, we've only seen him once this year. So that's pretty unrealistic. So I, I think that Mark Henry is going to carry that belt for a while. It's just... It's just how I feel and what I'm seeing. Um, they already did the Sin Cara blow-off, which I thought they were going to save for this next pay-per-view, but now that that's out of the way, we can focus on some other stuff, like Dolph Ziggler and building, you know, building him up for the talent that he is. Because you can't argue with me that they've really been putting a lot of effort and a lot of focus on this guy the last, like, even two, two and a half months. Um... Oh, okay. We're, are we good? Alright, so, I mean, Dolph is definitely improving on the microphone. He's definitely a solid in-ring worker. Uh, I see them taking the U.S. title off of him relatively soon, but I don't think that Zack Ryder's going to be the one to do it. 